Back in the summer of 2015, the Mavericks were putting together a team that they thought could compete for home court advantage in the first round of the playoffs. With Rick Carlisle on the bench, they had an ace up their sleeve that could enable them to go deeper into the playoffs than most thought possible. But that plan centered around the arrival of DeAndre Jordan. Of course, the Clippers took all manner of boat, plane, train, car, bike, and hang glider in order to kidnap him in his own home and overfeed him until he reversed his decision and went back to the Clippers. That Mavericks team still got a sixth seed, but got beat in the first round by the Thunder. Give credit to the Mavericks who never burned any bridges, and this time around, they were able to rescue Jordan off of a sinking ship in LA, but with an even older Dirk, the Mavericks' prospects seem a bit more dire. But when you factor in the addition of Dennis Smith Jr., the surprise development of Harrison Barnes into a number one scorer, and the fantastic draft day move to trade Trey Young for European phenom Luka Doncic, suddenly the Mavericks have a lot to be excited about. In the Mavericks offense, there are a lot of interchangeable parts. They really like this zipper set, which would start with the guard cutting up from the block to the top of the key. Clever action to have Dirk set the back screen for the ultra-athletic Dennis Smith Jr. Imagine Luka Doncic coming off this down screen for a good look at a three, and you could have DeAndre Jordan setting this pin down, and the Mavericks certainly have slip actions for this where he could get dunks for days. At 6'8", with guard skills, Carlisle will no doubt get Doncic playing in a variety of positions in their offense. Here is the zipper cut into pick and pop, and if this was Dennis Smith driving, either he's getting a layup or Doncic is nailing a wide open three. Here's a modified version of the zipper cut to get it to the big man at the elbow. This handoff and roll could easily be a gigantic lob and smosh by DeAndre, but look how much motion they get out of this to open up a three for Wes Matthews. And picture Doncic or Harrison Barnes getting this look as well. This time, Dirk gets the zipper cut, and imagine if they started DeAndre Jordan out top, give him a back screen, look out. But if that doesn't work, their offense continually flows and would eventually find him for another huge dunk. With Noel out there, he struggled to roll strong to the basket to either get himself a lob or suck in the defense to create shots for others. And while I love Mejri's hustle, let's face it, he is a limited player at best. Imagine DeAndre in Dirk's position down low and Dirk flashing to the high post. Suddenly Dirk's man can't be sagging so low to the paint and the whole offense wouldn't wither up and die relying on J.J. Barea to have to create some sort of shot. While DeAndre Jordan never became a serious post-up threat in LA, just look at the difference he makes when setting ball screens and rolling hard to the rim. It wouldn't be hard to imagine any combination of Barea, Smith, or Doncic running this action with him and generating tons of easy baskets that the defense has no hope of stopping. Another great action the Mavericks run is 25 where they pinned down for the ball screener. Look how this could be a lob for DeAndre right off the bat. And Doncic could be the guy spotting up, breaking down the defense, and feeding Jordan for more bunnies. And then they could have Wes Matthews in the weak side providing more spacing on this, enabling him to get open looks when Barnes breaks down the defense into the middle. And if you want to know how to get open looks like this, and better yet, how to knock them down, then you must click on the link in the description and check out my free video where I get on the court to demonstrate some key skills to getting open in your offense and knocking down the three ball. Tips and techniques you won't find anywhere else. So what are you waiting for? No matter your age or level, you will improve with this video, so click on the link now. How about this Iverson cut that pulls the defense towards the left side then the pick and roll towards the shooter in the corner and Dirk in the mid post. It leaves the backside exposed for another lob that DJ would crush. The development of Dennis Smith Jr. is key here. Since he got his feet wet last year and got a lot of experience running the pick and roll at this level. With more weapons this year, he'll have the opportunity to set more teammates up and I expect his assist totals to rise accordingly. As Smith continues to improve his vision, Doncic should benefit from the skip passes for threes in the corner. And with Dirk, Doncic, Matthews, and Harrison Barnes alongside of him, that's a lot of space created where the defense needs to be worried about the long ball. 
and all of that space should open up more drives for his quick burst of speed and powerful finishes at the rim. As we mentioned earlier, since getting to Dallas, Harrison Barnes has morphed into a go-to scorer for them, and they've got lots of plays that allow him to flow into an isolation. This is where Luka Doncic comes in, someone who can run this action, and I'd argue be even more effective because he can shoot better and has much better vision than Barnes. So these isos could turn into clutch threes or beautiful dimes for easy buckets for his Mavericks teammates. The Mavericks were last in offensive rebounds per game last year, and a quick glance at some footage will show you how big of an impact DeAndre Jordan will have in this area, as he averaged a whopping four offensive boards a game last year. Defensively, the Mavericks were below average and were close to last in defending the rim, as teams found it very easy to get right to the hoop and drop the ball through. Without question, DeAndre Jordan's mere presence down there will thwart a lot of attempts, and the shots they do try to get off will either be altered or returned to sender with no postage paid. Jordan is one of the most active and athletic big men in the NBA, and will no doubt raise their defensive rating all by himself. I would argue that Jordan should have gone to Dallas three years ago, since all he got by going back to the Clippers was the same role, same teammates yelling at him, a few extra wins, one more first round loss in the playoffs, and nothing much to show for it in terms of player development. And here's his chance to make up for it. And if the infusion of new talent can also inject a little new life into Dirk, then the bottom half of the Western Conference playoff bracket better wake up, since the Mavericks are making a run for that fifth seed. Sports fans, make sure to hit the subscribe button and adjust your settings so you can get notified immediately when we drop another great NBA video. Let us know how you feel with a thumbs up and a comment. After all, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel, we're a conversation. You win.